Dylan, you want to move? Hello, I'm Dylan. Uh, Martin. Hi, I'm Neil, and this is Youth on Subjects of the World. And today we're doing an uh, Ask Me Anything, and we have a, um, a forum with a few questions posted by people that we are going to answer because that's an Ask Me Anything. What, what is it associated with, though? What, like, what are we doing this through? Uh, self-directed, uh, it's the Alliance for Self-Directed Education. And the, I don't know if the website will be posted anywhere in the description, but um, it's www.self-directed.org -self if you want to go there. So, and uh, so yeah, as we want to <clears throat> just get right into the first question. We don't have that many questions, so we want to kind of like... Spread them out. Yeah, spread them out and also spend quite a bit of time on each question kind of involving tangents because we don't know that many questions. Yeah, because we never we can never manage to go on tangents. We yeah, yeah. Real hard at it. So should we uh, get started on the first question or do does anyone want to say anything first? No, let's uh, get started on the first question. All right. Okay. So okay wait a second. Okay, wait a second. So while he does that, let's hear a word from our sponsors. Oh wait, we don't have um, it. So while he does that, let's hear a uh, Wait one second. I can't find the timestamp of the thing. You know, right now it's 4.05. Okay, uh, but then, the, then I'll just have to go back and go to each one. Okay. <laughs> that sucks. All right. All right, so the first question is um uh it's from al mayberry and it says hi how well do the students get along as far as using uh the judicial system uh, to take care of grievances does the judicial system take a lot of time to handle the issues between students in a cyber school are there other schools that have different ways of ha uh, to handle it does your school have a judicial system and how much time does it take up? Okay, so Neil can go on a lot about this. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna like mute myself because I have no input. So, all right. So this is just the first part of the question because Dylan and I go to a Sudbury school. And this is clearly what it's uh, addressing the judicial system. For those of you who don't know, uh, there's a, a thing called the JC or the Judicial Committee uh, in pretty much yeah every Sudbury school pretty much, and they handle the grievances of students or uh, between students or between staff members or between students and staff members. So basically, if you think someone broke a rule, uh, you can write them up and the case will go before JC. And this, case, this the, the principle of JC, it's, it's basically a justice system run by your peers. So if no one's superior or inferior to you. You're the people you spend you know, all day with on the justice system and it's a rotating uh, a group of people. So everyone gets a chance to be on JC basically. Mm -hmm. Um, so, yeah, so, all right, so let's just, all right, so this is just the first part of the question. How well do students get along as far as using the judicial system to take care of things? Okay, so, uh, how, how well do they get along using it? Um, I think it, the, I think the, the younger students, uh, the, the majority of, I guess, what you would call learning or social development, uh, comes from JC for the younger students, I believe. Um, because it really just shows them, I guess, the limits and, and bounds of society and societal norms and... Like what's acceptable and what's not acceptable. Right. And also teaches them how to articulate themselves um, very well. And uh, I think JC is handled... New students tend to get the wrong idea of JC right off the bat. However, that changes very fast. Like uh, common misconceptions would be it's a bad thing if you're written up. First of all, getting written up is a normal thing that happens. Breaking rule. Everyone breaks rules every once in a while uh, by accident. And, and, and uh, you know, I would say for the new students, sometimes they conflate, like, it's like going to the principal's office. Yeah, yeah they conflate it with this, going to this superior authority that's basically going to punish you no matter what. And it's not what it is. Because if you go to JC, you're not guilty. You're, you're not. It's just what, it's just what we, um, it's, it's basically just the process that we use to handle grievances. And so I think very, very soon after new students um, are at the school, they get used to the judicial system very, very quickly, and they realize that it's not a bad thing. It's just a part of the school. I think everyone gets used to being written up, uh, uh, writing people up, and being on JC. So, uh, yeah, do you want to like, go more on that? Or? What tangent? Yo, I'm sorry, do you want to add anything onto that? 
Um, not really. Uh, I think I think Neil explained it very well. But did you you didn't talk about it all about um the time it takes? Well, no, no. We're going. I was going to go by each part of the question. Oh, okay. The next. No, part I, I don't have anything to add. Okay. Then the next part of the question is: Does the judicial system take a lot of time to handle the issues uh, between students in a Sudbury school? So um, that heavily heavily depends. It's, I cannot give you a concrete answer on that um, at all. Um, so Yeah, like, like um, last week, Neil knows because it sucked for him. It was like an hour and a half long every day, or close to that almost every day. For like a week. Yeah, for like a week. But other times, there might be no, there, there might be like. Uh, there might be no cases in which case. Yeah. If you're talking about individual cases, uh, normally, on average, I would say like five minutes. Um, it could just be literally even less than a minute if it's something very, very minor, or if you it's just like obviously it. not guilty. Yeah, like if it's obviously not guilty, Jason will just dismiss it like that. Or for example, somebody writes someone up for a rule that doesn't exist, we'll just immediately dismiss the case. Um, so, but depending for individual cases, it really depends. We've had JC that last for like an hour, over an hour for an individual case. Um, we've had JCs that last for under a minute for individual cases. It really depends because not all JC cases are equal. All of them are different. All of them require uh, different considerations based on uh, the, situ the circumstances, which rule was or was not broken, um, uh, points of contention, and more. Most and I think uh, mostly uh, the students that are actually involved because JC will have to you know change their attitude and the way they work towards each student to uh, uh, to get to their their reason for being written up, a reason for writing someone up on a fundamental level. And yeah, it's basically, well, uh, it's basically it. it's, I can't give you a concrete answer on how long a JC case takes because it really depends. Average would be five minutes, maybe 10, just because it, it uh, most of the cases are pretty minor mm. or are very open and, sh are mm. open and shut. Yes, I think, I think a lot of it is just trying to decide a good punishment for the crime. Right, I, think, I think we're still trying to figure that out for ourselves because yeah. really, we haven't been doing it for that long. Finding punishments that are relevant to and yeah. relevant that discourage uh, things in the future. Like, like people incur uh, mm. extra cleaning jobs, restrictions, like restrictions basically you can't use this for a week or something like that. Or um, You're like, Neil, um, so like today, one student a couple days ago or the day before, uh, she didn't do her cleanup job. And her cleanup job is to do all the mugs in the in like the school, like clean all because we have like a bunch of tea mugs. She has to clean them out, and that's her only job. And she didn't do it, and she just forgot to do it. And then after we told her to do it, then she did it. But we still wrote her up for it, even though it's it wasn't going to be that big of a punishment. But it was just like you kind of have to. And then um, and then uh, we made it. We made this is like common that she has to make like a sign or something that she has to wear all day, or like you have to make a sign the post somewhere. So she didn't do the mugs, so it said, real thugs clean the mugs. <laughs> so oh it can be comical. Or like, oh, there was another student who had to make a sign, and he didn't put his stuff away. So it's like, rough, rough, clean up your stuff. And there's a dog. At the Those are basically just like really minor things. Just to, yeah. Not really a punishment, but more, more giving them something where they'll remember. Mm-hmm. So a lot of times it's stuff like that. Other than that, it's JC is not a is not a big deal. But I do like a lot. I think what's really awesome about JC is the fact that it's not just like a superior, like dealing with the punishments. It's one of your peers. Even though sometimes I do think it can be confusing for younger students because they see like older students. Because the way we we form our JC is it's a younger student, a like not it doesn't even have to necessarily be mean by age it's just like experience and um then you have like a like a person with very little experience a person with a medium amount of experience and a person with a lot of experience and um, it is. Yeah. yeah so i think but but it tends to be the people with a lot of experience are the older students but it doesn't have to be like my brother andrew he's 11 he's one of the older he has more experience like he's more in experience with sudbury therefore if he breaks the rule it's going to be taken more seriously yeah. or you be given a harsher punishment. But also, I, I think for the younger students, they see like us, like me and Neil, who are older students, having like kind of like a position of power because 
most of the time the person who has very little experience isn't saying anything at all and it's just the two other people but mainly really mainly it's like the person with a lot of experience so they see us in like position of power and they get confused and they think that we're like above them like i've, I've gotten asked a few times if i'm the like staff member I think other than that, I think it's good. It's really good to have like the peers de dealing with the punishments because it's not like, oh, you're being unfair because you're older than me and you don't know anything. It's like, well, no, I'm like, I'm still a kid too. Yeah. So, is there anything else you want to add on? Or should we go to the next part of, the, of their question? Let me move on to the next part of the question. All right. But uh, are there other ways, are there other schools that have different ways to handle it? Okay, so and I'm, I'm assuming this is Sudbury School because it's pretty obvious that this is. If you look at the it wasn't. Um, so, okay. So at, at pretty much every Sudbury School, not really a Sudbury School that much if you don't have a, a JC based on the core principles of peer-to-peer -peer process for, for justice in the write-up system. Um, that being said, every school's JC is different in the way of the culture and the maturity of the school. For example, our school's JC would be different than Sudbury Valley's JC. One, because the cultures always develop differently in every single school. That's something cool about Sudbury School. You can go to one and have a completely different culture. Uh, number two uh, is the maturity of the school and basically how, that, how many rules they have, how many regulations, uh, how much they develop the process. So we're a relatively new school, we've been around for three years. Um, and, um, and the culture of our school is rather casual, uh, it, meaning that students will, um, we, don't, we don't tend to give out harsh punishments unless A, we think that the student's gonna do it again, or B, unless the student is completely apathetic or they broke a serious rule. Because we just, we, we have a small school, and we have a culture where we trust each other to the point of, unless you meet one of those two requirements, you're not going to get a real harsh punishment. Mm -hmm. Now, did you say we could go on a small tangent? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. All right. All right. Well, I thought I listened to a really interesting podcast today. It was uh, called Waking Up with Sam Harris. It's pretty popular. But I really liked he was talking about the ethics of apologizing. Like, like at what thing – is beyond an apology, like a sincere apology. Like, like if you kill someone, is a sincere apology, like make it eth like, like is that enough, kind of thing. Like, what? Where do you draw the line? At, what, what's enough? Like, when an apology is enough. And I really thought it was interesting what he was saying, and it was kind of like if you can draw a clear kind path. Of a brain, how we, uh, kind of a submarine how we where we draw the line of a student apologizing to another student as. Adequate yeah, punishment. and I, I really liked what he said. It's like, where can you draw a direct line of like, like how someone got to full remorse? Well, obviously they have to show full remorse for what they did and see how terribly horrific it is. Right. Like, like I really like to use the example as like you know the the guy who was like on top of the Texas like like the Texas University or something, and he was on top of like this bell tower, and he just like shot like fourteen, he killed fourteen people. A long time ago, not recently. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you – have you ever heard of it, Neil? Maybe. I'm sure you've seen the videos of it. But the guy, like, they, they killed him when they got to the top of the tower, but he had, like, a brain tumor, like, and that was impeding on his, like, his mental state was this brain tumor. And they got it removed, and he wouldn't have done it. So it was, like, an interesting ethical thing, like, should he have gone to jail for it because something that could physically have stopped it? And it, he sees the clear path of why it was horrific for what he did. And I, always thought, I thought that was really interesting. Like, like maybe you could apologize for murder if you could draw a direct line of how someone got. Like a, if someone could think how they got from a clear, like full remorse for what they did and see how like despicable it is. Mm -hmm. Feel that own disgust. Which I thought was really fat. I thought that was really interesting. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, go put, putting it back into, that's kind of what we have in Sudbury as well. We'll we will accept an apology for JC as in apologizing to the person you I guess offended uh, by breaking the rule. But you know, it's to an extent. Like, yeah, I mean, but I mean, coming back to the the question that we were, mm, yeah. which was, um, which was, uh, do other schools work out their grievances in other ways? 
uh, yes, uh, but that's either A, just talking about it with the student not going to JC, or B, if you go to JC, everything's pretty much the same. The only thing that changes it is the of the school and the culture of the school. At least that's my interpretation. Mm -hmm. All right. And now here's the last part of the question. Uh, wait a minute. This is a this is a redundant. This is a, the same. The question is: Does your does your school have a judicial system, and how much time does it take up? And then that's the same question: Is does the judicial system take a lot of time to handle the issues between in it, between students in Sudbury School? I guess that's if our school isn't a Sudbury School, but it is, and I think yeah. So as we can okay. either move on or um, I think we can move on. All right. So the next question is, let me just mark down when we're addressing this. And all right, the, I'm interested in learning about the transition from a public school, uh, which micromanaged, which micromanaged uh, your- Wait, Neil, Neil, who asked the question? I think that's oh, important. element education. Okay, so okay, yeah. <clears throat> I'm interested in learning about the transition from a public school, which micromanages your learning to an environment in which you gain agency of your learning. What advice uh, do you have for a smooth transition? What might one expect uh, to experience as far as feelings, public, or even family circumstances and a sense of direction? So the first part of the question, I think, Dylan, you will obviously need to answer because you, you, Dylan, actually went to public school before going to Sudbury. Mm -hmm. and I, so, I had that transition. Yeah. So basically, yeah. So mm -hmm. that basically. So my my transition, I don't know, like I don't really know too many other people's stories, but it started out, I just left sixth grade because I, I hated it so like, like horribly. And I, I really, my anxiety started to get like horrible, like having a panic attack like every week or more. I'm just like, I don't know, three panic attacks a day was like the worst. So I I had to leave. So I left and I started to do this stuff called homebound tutoring where you're still in public school, but they just send tutors to your house. If you can't, it's like for people that are like, I don't know, somehow disable themselves to get into school and just can't make it in. And then they have to send out tutors. So I, I got enrolled in that program for a little while and um, that was okay for a little while. They were like, I liked having the one-on-one -on -one experience with like a tutor and it like, God, we we went past everyone. Like it, it took it was a lot faster than if you were taking the courses in in public school. Like I think, like I I hadn't taken any classes for like three weeks. Like I left school and then it took like three weeks for them to get homebound tutors, or maybe even more than that. And then uh, we caught up in like a week. We caught up to what they were doing in a week. So it was nice being able to do that. And uh, so I did that for maybe like six months. And um, so after that, I like, I just started to get pissed off with that because it was pretty much the same old thing. And um, so then I moved on to kind of like homeschooling, kind of unschooling myself. Like I didn't really go into, I guess like my fa my parents didn't really, my parents and me didn't have like the vocabulary to describe what we were doing. But I would say it was, it was a mix of like unschooling, homeschooling. Like I was, I was doing it pretty much all on my own, but I still was in the mindset like I have to, I have to learn math now. Like let me put out some time to do math. Let me put out some time to do reading because I had to do reading kind of thing. So it wasn't like, but I didn't really know what unschooling was either, because there weren't, like we, the little we looked into it, there weren't too many unschooling, and no, like nothing about unschooling. It was just like Christian groups, Christian homeschoolers. So after the, I did that for like a year. And I got kind of bored with that because I didn't really have too many friends my age. And I felt like I was kind of – like, I, I didn't really leave the house all that much. Like, there would be just, like, a week where I didn't – I just wouldn't leave the house. Not because I – not because I didn't want to. It's just because there's no reason to. I didn't have to go anywhere. I didn't have any – like, I didn't really have any friends back then. It was kind of sucked a lot. So I thought, like, you know, I, I want to try and find a place that I can actually, like, go to and make a lot of friends. So I started to – I don't know why I just thought to look up alternative education and there's like a uh, what's it? like an article about seven time seven kinds of school homework's not for you I forget exactly what it was so I uh, I read that and it, it had like Montessori and all those kind of schools but one of them was Sudbury and uh, 
So, and that sounded really fascinating to me, a Sudbury school, so I decided to look it up. And it sounded fascinating to my parents, too. And uh, kind of as a, just a joke, I looked up South Jersey Sudbury School, and it popped. It was like South Jersey Sudbury School opening two months because it was like July, and, you know, it starts in September. And um, I was like, oh, wow, that's pretty crazy. So then uh, we started to go from there, and I found it, and I really loved it. It's actually South Jersey Sudbury School. Yeah, the school is actually called South Jersey Sudbury School. So, I mean, it was pretty awesome, and then uh, that's how I went from there. But I would say it really took about two years to completely get out of, like, a, a public school mindset. It, it took a long time to completely get out, like, to where I wasn't afraid of, uh, of Sundays because, you know, the day after Sunday, you have to go back to school. Like, there would be times where I was just, like, it would be a Sunday, and I'm feeling anxious. I'm like, oh, I'm feeling anxious, and I'm like, oh, right, because on Sunday, I have to go back to school. I would have had to go back to school. So it was nice to be able to uh, to eventually get out of that. Like it took a year for most of it to go away, but it took another year for it to go away completely. So that was my journey with with unschooling, like with my transition. Do you have anything to say, Neil? Was there any other? I was there another part of the question? Yeah, there is. We'll get move on to that. What were you saying, Martin? Well, I was just gonna jump in on that part to say I haven't had an experience personally with transitioning, like from one to another, but I've had a lot of friends who have and gone back and forward between it, like throughout the years, like cycling back between public school to like homeschool to like type, different types of private schools and like non-public education, like Montessori's or um, like things like that. And then back to public school and then homeschooled and just like all around the place. And I think one of the, whenever I ask them about like how that feels, the biggest thing that they always say is the way you're treated in a public school and the the way that adults and teachers treat you in a public school is way more demeaning than in like other yeah. places and then yeah. the other thing was the way normal adults treat you when they find out you don't go to a public school is way more demeaning and I always found that interesting that in like no matter what, there's just going to be people looking down on you for whatever reason. I haven't had that much of an experience with people looking down on me, but I wouldn't be surprised about it if someone had that. I I have. I think we everyone on here has probably got the like, what's two plus two question oh and God. stuff. You know, surprisingly, I haven't gotten that one yet. I have. You have? Yeah. I'm like, it's window. What do you mean? Like, what kind of question is that? Okay, wait. No, just be clear, though. It, it wasn't, they didn't literally I mean, I, say what's two plus two, did they? No, they did. What? Okay, come on. That's like, so yeah. like, Unironically? Unironically. It wasn't like, now oh. I was 12, so I wasn't, but still, well, I was 12. 12. You're 12, okay. I, I'm, I'm 16 now, so if I got that question now, and they were serious, I'd be like, <laughs> no. Just get at my face. But at 12, even at 12, I was like, dude, I'm 12 years old. I've made it this far in life. I know what to do. Everybody, because um, you know there's going to be one guy saying, they're deflecting because they don't actually know. <laughs> <laughs> the answer is three, okay? Yes. Two plus two equals three, all right? Yeah. Two plus two is 22. <laughs> yeah. Two plus two is 22. All right. Move on. Um, but, um, so what was the next part of the question? Yeah. So uh, next part of the question Oh, sorry, I forgot. I can't read. Uh, I forgot about that part. I can't read anything. <laughs> Idiot. <laughs> All right. What you get uh, for not going to public school, dude? I know. S sucks for me. All right, let me see. Where did I leave off? I mentioned... Uh, let me see. Um, all right. What advice do you have for a smooth transition? What advice do you have for a smooth transition? Basically? Dylan, do you want to nice. hop on that first? Because, you know, you actually went to public school and then went to uh, kind of um, unschooling, homeschooling, hybrid, and then went to Sudbury. I don't know. I mean, at least for me, it felt like kind of like a natural progression to get from one thing to another. But I don't know. Like, I don't think I'd be the best to give a, an example because I don't think it was that smooth for me. Like, it took I, a long time and it took a, a lot of, like, trials. But I think, Neil, Neil, you have something to say. Yeah, I, I do because I didn't – well, I didn't experience uh, nearly as much of a dramatic transition as Dylan did. I experienced a transition because after I was, I was homeschooled for a little while when I was really young, then I was unschooled for a really long time. And now, of course, I go to a separate school as of three years ago. Um, and, yeah, so I, 
Uh, I felt this need when I went to the suburb school, and I feel like unschoolers would also feel like they came from public school. Like Dylan was just saying, you feel like you need to learn something. Like when I went to suburb school, I was like, oh well, technically I can I can do nothing all day, or uh, but I should be I should and I also I shouldn't be playing with my friends either. I should sit down and do work because that's the point. Uh, so I, I really felt that, and then it took me a while to realize that everything we do has value. Sure, some things may have more value than others. But I really undervalued the the aspect of enjoying your life as well as learning things from everyday experiences. And mm-hmm. I, I think my advice would be number one, Pete, this is don't give a shit about what people think about you. There are so many assholes where it's gonna be like, what's what's two plus two? Like, uh, um, first of all, well, to to censor a little bit what Neil's saying, to be a little less brash about it. Do you need to have the people attitude of don't, of don't care about what other people think of yeah. you? But also make sure you're not – what I want you to do is to get upset and be rude. Well, no, I'm not saying get upset. I'm well, saying I know. In your mind, don't care what people think about you. Do not care. Talk yeah. to them whatever you want. Try to change your but mind. But don't care what people think about you. If you're like a 13-year-old who has like mental health issues and you have people who think down on you – and there's like mm. you can't get into a, a mindset where you can just like not care. It's uh, something I would recommend. Well, it's, a, it's, it's a, just it's a learning process in a time. Yeah, like you gotta think about things. You have to figure out ways of thinking about situations like that. Okay, no, no, no. Uh, wait. Well, I actually, I actually have one thing to say about this. I think that would have helped me a lot. Is to like, like. Uh, to have a plan and stick with the plan and don't don't go back on it like be 100 percent sure on it and don't don't go off of that plan because there are a lot of times where i had no idea what i wanted to do and that was stupid i like i should have known what i wanted to do like i should have found out about the sudbury school way before everything else but that's what i really should have done and there are a lot of people that did try to get me to not do it at all like to go unschooled or homeschooled like i had this one tutor like sh- I hated her so much. Like she made my mom cry and me cry because she was she was saying like, oh well you're ruining. Like she was telling me she's like you're ruining your mom's life. That's what she told me, and she told my mom that she's ruining her life. If she does this. It's like Jesus, stupid bitch. <laughs> and because she, she was like, if you went to a mon- uh, not as monastery, a suburb school. And no, if if I homes if I was homeschooled. Okay, homeschooled. <laughs> yeah, I hated her so much. Wait. <laughs> That's so ridiculous because, like, I know it, that stressed me out so much. Outperform their peers. I know. Yeah. Well, she was, she was like, like my mom's name was Tara. She's like, Tara, you're ruining your life. My, she's like my, uh, I don't know, like my daughter-in-law. She, she homeschools her kids, and uh, her, she, her life sucks, and because she has to like spend her whole day with her kids, and she doesn't have any time to herself. And I was like. But I thought that was so stupid. I was like, "Well, her kids are like six, and I'm 13. Like, I can I can handle myself on my own." Not to mention, that's a pretty big like may, like I don't know maybe no, like that. That's person. like that's just like that's one example. She literally has nothing. I know, but even then, like maybe that person that's I wouldn't be surprised if that was just like your tutor's perception of how that like yeah that, like, how their life her, is. Like, maybe exactly. maybe just maybe she's a mother who wants to spend time with her children. Yeah, exactly. Well, just, to, children. just to be clear. Just to be clear, this is, um, again, I, I'm not saying that you should just, you, you should always articulate yourself well when you're talking to people, but these are the kind of people that you really shouldn't care about what they think about you. Like, just, you need to look into yourself and see, uh, and hold yourself up to your own standards. Now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, definitely. Yeah, and so, I would, I would say okay. too, like, like that, that kind of thing happened more than I would like, that I, more than I would have liked it to happen. And I'm and not like going to think- ignore everyone else and just go, I, this is what I think everyone else sucks. Yeah, abso- absolutely. I'm saying just take each situation as its own and realize, is this person act? Does this person or what's the person saying actually have any bearing on my life? And is it act- and is what they're saying actually valid? Like, like actually, right after I left public school, I went to um, this, like, therapist dude. I don't know. He was – now, that guy was really stupid because he – he was like the, I don't know, like the school district's therapist, like psychologist or something. I don't know. And so he had, he like had to do an evaluation on me to see what I could qualify for, if I could qualify for her, the homebound tutoring or like there was this other program I was trying to get into. 
and it was like for kids that like couldn't go to normal public school but it was like still public school it was just like it was like not as strenuous it was kind of it was more like a one-room classroom and that's not interesting but I, I didn't get i didn't get into that granted luckily i was sad at the time i didn't get into it but i wouldn't have found sudbury and so then uh so i went to him and he like he wrote this letter afterwards like his evaluation because my parents had told him he's like you know we're taking him uh i was going to see like it was like a I don't know what he was. He's like a like a doctor, therapist that my dad had seen has has been seeing for a very very long time, and I wanted to go see him, and that was helping a lot. And so he wrote this the that like doctor therapist like school district guy wrote a letter. It was like you can do all this kind of like he really he was like he basically said like like nutcracker therapy kind of stuff. Like he thought it was bullshit, and uh, he was like, but you have to actually do medical science on him and. Like he was like, you have to pre prescribe actual antidepressants, or he's gonna fail. So he wanted to put me on like this hard schedule of antidepressants, which I was just like, fuck. And uh, I was like, and my parents, like, it's like my parents are like, well, he's not psychotic, and he's not depressed, so why should he have to do that? Yeah. I, and yeah. Uh, yeah, that guy was that guy's ultra stupid. But I could tell he was like, he's one of those doctors that uh, he just gave drugs to anyone who wanted because his whole his whole office was just like, um, like Percocet addict addicts. Yeah. That was his whole office. I was like, fuck. Don't even get me started on antidepressants. Oh my gosh, I have such a big problem with those. It's like, fuck, I'm not doing like over that. the over per, like over prescribing of those. I mean, I know I mean, it's crazy. I think that's true with like, like all uh, prescription drugs. Like they're like the fact that weed is a Schedule One drug. Where that is proclaimed to have no benefits whatsoever, and that you can get oxy because you in like it's not easy to get oxycotton, but it's uh, not hard. To but it's also it's also kind of messed up because there's people that like like my neighbor, she legitimately needed oxycotton. Like it was not like it was not just because she wanted to, but she was like in horrendous pain and she can't get it because it's almost impossible to get it now because so many doctors are getting sued for overprescribing it. And it's almost impossible to find people that are actually prescribe. This is now. why all drugs should be so, legal, everyone. Jesus Christ is saying. I don't know, people yeah, and hurt themselves. I, I'm I'm 100 percent against the like the use of drugs and alcohol in my own mind. Like I'm yeah. straight edge. Yeah. I like I morally disagree with that, and I think drugs 100 percent should be legal. Like, yeah, I don't it's think not an issue of morality. But anyways, we're getting off. From yeah. the question. I, there's a, there's a, that's sort of the next part of the question. But, okay. but well, I, real quick, I had one more thing to say on that. About the transition, like, that was the last thing we were talking about, right? We've gotten a little far off mm -hmm. about, like, advice for the transition. Another piece of advice that, like, I would say is just make sure you don't, like, like what Neil was saying, make sure you don't let what anyone says get to you. And no matter what people tell you, school doesn't, you don't get taught how to like learn or how to know how to learn and you don't need to be forced to learn to have the natural incentive to learn learning is part of life and learning is part of the of human nature we're naturally curious and don't let people tell you because you're not going to public school that you're not going to learn things because the chances are not going to public school you're going to learn more about the real world than like whatever they tell you about like George Washington's like whatever, like things like that are interesting to a point, but should not be mandatory. And for the majority of the world, unless you want to be teachers are not going to apply. So just keep that in your head and try your best not to engage in conversation with these people. Cause the chances are you're not going to be able to convince them otherwise of your point. Yes. All right. Now, so what's the next part of the question? Right, so the, the final part of the question is, what might one ex uh, expect to experience as far as feelings, public, or even family criticisms and sense of direction? Okay, so I, I definitely want to address the part about criticisms from people. Uh, we just, we like lightly just touched on that, like literally just, just did. But um, uh, I, would you say what are your feelings? I don't know the wording on that. I mean, it happens uh, quite a lot. Yeah, what are your what might someone experience? Okay, so um, pretty much 
a lot of people are going to be skeptical and a lot of people are going to have questions. And I'm going to experience a lot of questions. What? Just questions. Lots of yeah, questions. Lots and lots of questions. And some people will tend, these are the people that I'm saying, uh, don't really care what they think. A lot of people are going to also kind of criticize you, not just, not just criticize the viewpoint. Like, like talking about a viewpoint and like criticizing viewpoint is not bad at all. Be like, yeah, like I've, I've definitely talked to a lot of people that um, that like that don't get the Sudbury School, but they're not attacking me, and I'm fine with that because I can I can defend it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <clears throat> yeah. A lot of it is um, yeah. A lot of people will not attack you, but they'll, but they'll question a lot of things about you, and that's not inherently bad. When people start to be um either a, you know, patronizing or just downright disrespectful. Those types of people that you just want to ignore. You feel that from a lot of people, even family, that you probably, well, I haven't really experienced that, um, but you definitely, you definitely probably will, especially if people, some, some members of your family extended or anything, uh, don't, aren't really too content. And I would, I would say, if you're going through this, don't expect to not be called stupid a few times. But as a joke, I, I get called, is like, He's like, you go to the school where uh, you don't have to do anything. I get that a lot, a lot, a lot. But it's more as a joke. It's not like yeah. that. It's half a joke and they're half serious. Yeah. Well, something that I would say is, like, you get a lot of questions. And, like, kind of like what we've been saying. Like, you're gonna, some of them are going to be, like, actual, like, I would like to know information about what you're doing. And some of them are going to be like, well, how do you know this? And stuff like that. And the best way to do it is to answer all of them with the same level of respect. If you can right. see the person actually cares about what you're saying, be a little bit more detailed. And if you can see the person's very skeptical, 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 it's because I'm on school. I can't pronounce words. Um, Idiot. I, <laughs> I, um, Good I always just, to learn. I just like answer the questions the same way I would for anyone. And if I get people being rude, that's when I turn on the super snarky, like, guy who spends all his time researching things like well actually i'm gonna become a human dictionary now we're gonna have a conversation because and then when that happens yeah, that's you gonna be fun. stupid i'll whoop your ass yeah but like that but it's always i wait a while so another thing is this is gonna sound weird but be very well educated on what you are yes, like i was about to say that too doing. because if you're well educated on what you're doing you can like defend yourself from people who are going to prosecute you for it <laughs> Don't be like, like change, and you can change their minds about it too. Yeah, well, like if you can see that that's a possibility, because our human incentive is to like stick to our guns more. If someone's being like, if someone is going against you, someone being really disrespectful in your head, yeah. in your head, don't care what you don't care about what they think about you. <sighs> I, I would even say be more respectful and be more and articulate yourself uh, as 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 well as you can when talking to these people, because. You, you, I don't want to, like, you want to come off as someone very, very, very well read. Um, you want to come off as someone who's educated on the topic. Uh, and most likely, you probably are a lot more than them and understand, understand. It. And, uh, yeah, just come off, try to come off very well read. And just, yeah, and you, you like Martin was saying, become like, I become the human dictionary. Yeah. Then, yeah, so. Yeah, be very yeah. articulate and know what you're going, like. Be, act like you've answered this question a million times. Yeah. But something that's also something that I've encountered and something that is very helpful is if you can present yourself in a way that's, like, impressive or whatever, but not I don't mean, like, show off your talents. I mean, just, like, a lot of kids and that, that like, let me – I'll use the demographic we all fall under. Like, boys in between the ages of, like, 14 and 17 – very largely fit into a category of people that adults don't really like that much. <laughs> like, obviously, that's a... Really Honestly, people that category. people don't really like that much, everyone. Yeah. Like, they're just... It's a it's a category of people that people are not a fan of. That's a generalization, obviously. there's But, like... There yeah, are yeah. it's a generalization, people. yeah. But if you go to, like, say... I think all of us are involved in various, like things in our community like theater and like stuff that we've done it's just you can tell when the people expect you to be like everyone else your age so if you aren't like everyone else your age like if you are like 
there is something different about you like there's always the thing that like people say like no you're not special but like the people on this call for instance we're not like special but we're not exactly we don't lead normal lives of people our age we live a different kind of normal like it's normal for the other people that we live our lives with like the other unschoolers and the other like Sudbury schoolers but for the majority of like America this is not normal and like in order to like display that I always try and make sure I'm presenting the best version of myself and like so if I'm in a group like say I do a lot of theater so say I'm like well I do like the crew side so say I'm like at where I do theater and there's a bunch of like people I know and they're all like my age and all of them are doing stupid things like running around shirtless and dancing and swearing. Wait, really whoa, 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 what the fuck? What did you just what the fuck you say? Running around shirtless. <laughs> How old are these people? What? Like my age. It's a what? long story. Well, Wait, like, what do we do? Whoa, just whoa, like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Slow down. Slow down. You're not moving away from this. You're not. No, no, no. Uh, they're, they're theater kids. They need attention. I don't know. <laughs> anyway. They run around shirtless dancing? Well, they like, da- like they dance shirtless and wave their shirts. Theater kids are... Anyways, yeah, kids are like the most eccentric people you'll ever meet. Anyways, but like while they're doing that and like swearing loudly in front of like the six year old, I try and be the one to be like, hey guys, let's not do that. Because I think what people will expect is the kid who's unschooled, who doesn't go to school, is gonna be the super wild one. But in yeah. reality, most of the time, the sixteen year old who's unschooled is gonna be the one to be like, Hey guys, I mean, the let's try and be loser, let's doesn't... try and be yeah, Mark is a freaking loser. loser. He just <laughs> <had> <laughs> like, 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 just like well, <laughs> Here's the thing, though. Ass, he can't do it. He yeah. have fun. Well, here's the thing, though. Like, excuse me. For things like this, it's different. Also, Neil, you're one to talk, Mister. <laughs> like, oh, well, actually, um, but <laughs> actually, that's false, and I'm um, not going to articulate myself um, in a. Uh, I never. And, I don't know. Uh, why but the o- the other thing is, I al- I also try and be the best at like making sure people feel comfortable enough to ask questions around me. So I try and be pretty outgoing, but also I can be a scary looking guy sometimes because I'm like really tall and my fashion sense is like leather with spikes and stuff. So people are generally intimidated yeah, by me. Yeah, story. The first time I saw Martin, I thought he was gonna mug me. <laughs> and then like find story. out I'm unschooled. Story time. Story time. <laughs> like find out I'm unschooled and also I wear spiky leather. It gives <laughs> off a distinct impression. But then like in a group setting like that, where I'm the one to be like, guys, this isn't a good idea. That's how people start to set that part in your brain and like their brain as, oh, this one's like the good kid or whatever. And like, that's just like a way that I try and deflect those comments is I find if I'm making sure that I'm like being like not well behaved, cause it's not like I'm bad behaved, but like making sure that I'm presenting myself in a way that's like respectable, like a decent human being. I get a lot less of those questions than I would if I was dancing around shirtless. Cause you know, if we're all like, if I was dancing around shirtless with all those guys, the person who'd get it like in the most trouble and the most talking to would be the unschooler. Cause he doesn't go to school and he needs to be talked to about how to be disciplined. I think a, Fro- a Freudian, a Freudian slip will be taken a lot more seriously if you're uh, an unschooler or a Sudbury schooler than anyone else. Like if you make one simple mistake, like, like um i don't know like something something that like not like necessarily a mistake as in just a random mistake but a mistake that let's say something you learn in school just even if it's just like a slip of oh shoot uh miss that or do that uh yeah it's like i think it, it makes me it makes me stand up to a higher class of like yeah you're gonna be held up to a higher standard even exactly. though you feel like people should if, if the people's uh preconceived notions of you uh, really uh, rang true, you'd think that they would actually hold you to a lower standard. Like, uh, to, yeah, like I definitely have gotten like, if I if I mess up something, like some math problem, then, uh, and I mess it up, like just a small thing, it's like, oh, well, you're just stupid, I guess. Yeah. Like, like more, is a, more is a joke, but it definitely. Yeah, yeah. but it's, it's definitely there. So like. It's not like, yeah, it's not treated as much as, um, oh shoot, actually it's this. Yeah, it's. I forgot. It's, it's, yeah. It sounds strange to say, and I know everyone always says, like, be the best you can possibly be. But really, when you – if you want to avoid more of the awkward questions, try and make sure that what you do, you're good at. Mm-hmm. Like, 
and like the, obviously that's what you should do in life just in general is to like try and be good at the things that you do to like earn money and like stuff like that but especially with like things like that where like people are going to question your intelligence obviously try your best but don't let it get to you if people treat you differently because at the end of the day you're going to be in their mind as the unschooled kid and you could be more educated than the, them about things and they'll still think of you as the unschooled kid but mm -hmm. what you got to try and do is make sure that doesn't get to you because eventually you're not going to be just the unschooled kid like at first you'll be that like everyone will be a little skeptical and like for in that question it said like family how is family going to treat you personally i've kind of lucked out with in terms of family members and how they feel the only thing i get asked a little bit more often than i'd like to be asked is so where are you going to college because <laughs> i don't want to go to college but anyways like i've lucked out my family basically just treats me like a normal person for the most part like of course there's always like the the not so like after like your uncle like your great uncle has had like a few drinks and he asks you like the not so pleasant question of like so how do you learn math it's like like it's just that's a little awkward but mm -hmm. for the most part in my experience family and extended family will mostly be civil about it and if they do have doubts for me when i get asked questions it's usually very some like civil mm -hmm. but it's also just my experience with my family my experience is like so my dad's side like we don't really I guess my, my dad grew up being Jewish, but I'm not, we don't really do anything. I guess we celebrate like a few of the holidays. We go to my cousin's house. Well, not really my, it's my dad's cousin's house. And we go there and his whole side goes to those kinds of parties. But my dad doesn't really, it's funny. My dad does not like parties. So normally it's just my mom who goes and my mom grew up Catholic. So that's kind of funny, but they, uh, they are very like, well, where are you going to call Like they're like the classic, like, kind of like New Yorker Jewish family. Like, it's real. Like, they own, like, like, where are you going to college? Where are you going to college? How do you learn? It's, like, much more upfront about everything. And then my mom's side, who I'm much, I'm much closer with my mom's side than on my dad's side, they, uh, either they get it or they're just kind of ignorant about it. Like, they just don't really get it. And not like they're against it. They just don't get it. Like, they don't really, I don't know. But either they get it or they. There's some people who will never get it. That's a, yeah. that's something. Yeah. Like my my aunt, I must have explained it to her like three times, and she still doesn't. She still but the other thing is like you don't have to prove yourself to anyone. No, you don't. Like if you want to avoid, like to just to space what I said, if you want to avoid awkward conference, like awkward conversations mm -hmm. and sometimes confrontations, it's best to present yourself as like as the best you you can possibly be. I would say we have to move on kind of soon. But yeah. also, just like real quick, in general, no one's opinion of you really matters in the long run as long as you don't take it as mm -hmm. like if they have constructive criticism. But if they're just like, you're stupid because you don't sit in a classroom eight hours a day, that's not constructive and it's blatantly wrong. So just ignore it. All right. Let's move on. Thank you for that question. We are now going to move on to the next question by Bria Bloom. She actually set up this whole thing. Um, hello, what do you think is the most important thing for adults, parents, facilitators, and mentors uh, to know when working uh, in self-directed communities such as Sudbury schools or parenting a self-directed young person such as unschoolers? Okay, so <clears throat> that's a good question. Let your, well, so for, I'll answer the parents of unschoolers side of things, because that's the side I'm most experienced with. There, so I think there's two extremes that I see a lot. There's like the conservative, like homeschoolers. They're like eight hours homeschool a day. You're not allowed to leave the house, like the super sheltered. And then there's the opposite side, which is almost not like too much freedom, because I don't, but just not enough guidance that nothing's really happening. Like there are definitely still unschooled kids who sit, doing not a lot and that's not necessarily bad but I've definitely met some unschoolers who just like are not necessarily like socially up to date and just it's not that they have too much freedom it's that that they don't their parents don't really give them guidance on what to learn 
And that's but actually kind of to force their kids to it's the same. Yeah, but just like actually help them figure out like what they might want to do so that they're not just mm-hmm. sitting playing Minecraft all day. Not that that's bad, it's just not necessarily good. And it's not. Yeah, I have actually, I've seen do. that like multiple times. Yeah. I think more, what's more important, um, what's, what's more important uh, than just trying to expose your kids to things is kind of trying to understand and teach them social norms. Yeah. That is something Definitely. more important because the social norms with that, I feel, will come learning. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I think it's the job of, in Sudbury schools, it's peers' job and staff members uh, with unschooling, it's peers, but to a Neil, much bigger extent. Neil, your, your mom did a shit job doing that. <laughs> 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 oh, the first time I met Neil, I, I'm pretty sure he called me ignorant about something. <laughs> I'm, sure. I'm not sure. You are ignorant about something, Martin. Uh, probably not. We were talking about, like, something stupid, though. Like, it was like one of those things where, like, we were just having a normal conversation, and then you were like, you're ignorant. And I was like... <laughs> talking about like doctor who dude calm down uh yeah but if you're ignorant about something it doesn't matter what it is about well, uh, <laughs> anyways martin's just really insecure that i called that one time i called him ignorant one time and he's just trying to bend me back <laughs> yeah that one time you called me ignorant about doctor who yeah it's i okay. didn't really i didn't really have that that my parents oh, okay. I'm, i feel like i'm pretty good with picking up social cues yeah well for me yeah because everyone who's, who picks up social cues uh normally says that <laughs> I'm pretty good at picking up social cues. But he says I, as he sits in a room with like a couple who are very clearly like locking eyes, and you're just there like, "Hey guys, want to watch a movie?" <laughs> yeah. Anyways, but like, there's definitely a middle of the road that you can find. Martin, you don't have to project, okay? <laughs> <laughs> like a middle of the road that you can find between like a. You're going to sit and play Minecraft, and I'm going to go downstairs and meditate all day. And, like, you're going to sit here for eight hours straight, mm-hmm. and you're going to learn the basics of every single subject. And then you're going to study those subjects meticulously until you're 20 years old, and you're not allowed to date until you're 16. And, like, all these rules and restrictions, because either one of those, if you're not exposed, like, either one of those is sheltering in a way. Mm. It's just a very, uh-huh. one is, like, like- they're sheltering them on accident, and the other one is you're sheltering them on purpose. Very like my my dad, on purpose. my dad, he um. So we went to the restaurant that I've been working at, and my dad's friend happened to be there. So they were talking about about the school, and they were saying, "Oh, well, I'd love to send my kids there, but like it's just the money's the issue." My dad was like, "Well, actually, the money is not an issue because you, you just pay whatever you can pay." It's financial aid. Yeah, financial, yeah, financial aid. But then we start. But then when I started, my dad started to go into it. Was like. You know, like a big thing is like trusting your kids, and it was like crazy. Like this guy, he like he checks, he takes away his kids' phones at nine o'clock. I mean, you're not allowed to date before sixteen, and yep. like you check your phone, he checks their phone like every single day. Like yep. fuck, my yeah. Parents, my parents have never done that ever, or even thought about it. Yeah, but like, yeah. So there's two different sides of the spectrum. And I think to, like, help parents understand unschooling, if they want to do it or if they just are interested in it, that's a very – it's on, it's a not a one thing. It depends on the child and it depends on the parents. But really quick, like, to flip that question around, I think there's also an issue of kids that need to understand, like, your parents are still doing – like, unschooling is not easy, ne- like, not necessarily no, easy. not to like unschool your kids and it's also not easy socially because the amount of questions my dad and mom get about like unschooling like daily is just baffling Mm -hmm. so it's like they have like the stock response that's like well i think everyone involved in like the self-directed learning community has the stock response developed yeah but like i Mm -hmm. think they're definitely the biggest thing for unschooling the thing that would work both ways and just all around is like trust and communication, which just sounds like you could give that advice to like anyone in any situation as two good things to yeah. help. But I think the main thing is like is just trust. I think I agree with you, Martin. Yeah, like if you can trust that your child will actually learn things, if you like if you give them some guidance and people learn things. Like people study things meticulously. That's like that there are definitely different levels. There are people who are fine with just like like the base mm-hmm. level of knowledge and then there's people who are like i'm gonna learn all there is to know about like modular synthesizers or whatever 
Mm-hmm. And like, I, like I thought it was I thought it was really interesting at one of our open houses, the school's open houses. Somebody was like, "Well, what if my kid just sits there and does nothing all day?" And this other guy who was there, who was from another Sudbury school, just wanted to pop in. He was like, "That would be a." He was like, "I would give a child a hundred dollars if they sat in a room for an entire year and did absolutely nothing." Oh yeah. It's like it would like, be impossible. Exactly. Like I, this regularly happens to me where I'll have like my one day at home because I'm a I'm a busy person. So I'll be like, "This is my day at home. I'm just gonna like sit and relax." And I'll end up like spending six hours researching some project, and I like I built something. Like my dad gets home from work, like, "Oh, how was your down day?" It's like, "Oh, well, I I built a computer." <laughs> like just mm-hmm. things like that. Like I can't. My brain doesn't turn off. I want I'm to be doing something. I'm not arguing. This isn't me trying to like. I don't want to go into like a to use kind of, um, what's the word I'm looking for, kind of unsavory terms. I don't want to turn this into like a circle jerk or anything, but I, but I, but I mean, I feel like, like, yeah, if I, like, I'll like to look into something like, like I, I, I tend to like know quite a few things about just random topics. I'm not trying to like. Well, no, don't, you're not brat. Like, that's the other thing is like, when we always do these shows, just like this is completely side note you can always tell like when we're trying really hard not to brag even like if we know we're definitely well informed on a subject we're always like well we got we kind i kind of know about this and five minutes later like when we've actually brought up the subject one of us you fucking like, idiot yeah yeah like it just it goes so escalate like escalates so quickly because i think we're all we've definitely all we're all like on like this like the smarty kind of people and we've all had that experience where like we're talking and the other person's just like Dude, shut up. Yeah. Yeah, it's like you're yeah. stupid. I'm going to have that experience with the building like every single goddamn day. Well, I mean, yeah. 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 So. Yeah. Like, that doesn't, that happens to Neil every single, every single conversation he has. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> so I think we're definitely all a little self-conscious. I, about it. So anyways, it, go into what you were saying. Yeah. So I think, um, so I think, um, yeah, I think a lot of uh, unschoolers who, I think develop the social cues. I think it's less of a problem with Sudbury schoolers uh, simply because they have the peer to peer process. I think with unschooling, it's kind of the parents and the peers job to um, not educate the, pre- the uh, kids socially, but just, just inform them about, you know, social aspects, right? Cause I feel like getting the social aspects really is the catalyst for learning. Right. And I think that that's part, one of the main reasons I like to go and just research you know, stuff, right? It's because I like to know a lot about just random topics. I think it's just really fun. And yeah, it's, it's, just- I definitely go through as an unschooler. I definitely go through phases. Like last oh, year yes. this time I was ex- obsessed with political science. I like was obsessed with it. And then now this year I'm learning about modular synthesizers. Cause it's like, it's like frequency, but it's like taking like a, like electricity and converting it to sound like directly. It's just, it's all very interesting. And it's like, people are like, well, what are you going to do with that knowledge when you grow up? And it's like, well, what are you going to do with like any of the things you learn in school? Like, <laughs> I, mm-hmm. I could find a, like a job as a producer or like, like I could do. And also, things. first of all, you're talking about that with a person right now. So it's literally using the knowledge. Yeah. Like, that, the, the, like, the, this hypothetical person that anyone's talking to that says that, uh, clearly has no critical thinking skills because they do not realize that, oh, wait a minute, we're talking about the situation right now. Well, that's a, a little extreme, but yeah. No, it's not. It's not. They're idiots. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> I, would have say no too, critical thinking. I would say, too, to, like, someone that was thinking about sending their kids to an unschooling, like, to some kind of unschooling or sideberry schools, like, have your motives set. Like, sending don't... your kids to unschooling? Well, it's like, like, starting unschooling or going to a sideberry school, it's like, like, Clearly define for yourself what the reasons are you're sending your child to, I don't know, if you're starting unschooling or going to a Sudbury school. is like, because I know we've definitely had parents that come to the school that first off don't even understand what's going on or what, what the whole thing is about, which is astonishing, honestly, that they have no idea. Like, we had one kid that was going for a year, and the mom literally had no idea what he was doing the entire time. I was like, this is so retarded. And the kid wasn't even that, like, stupid. So, I want to make but also but, but also we've had like other parents that like seem like they just want to be edgy and just like want to be like oh look at this oh, I'm sending we, my child we to don't an send our chil- we don't send yeah, exactly. our children to public school because it's public like, school is run by our filthy fascist society. <laughs> yeah, it's like look at look at my kid he's so much better than yours cuz he goes to an alternative school. He's part of the like, communist uprising. Yeah. <laughs> like you have to figure out communism. 
I think, like, a lot of parents just have to figure out for themselves, like, you know, I'm sending my kid here because either, you know, you genuinely don't think public school, like, public education is a, I don't know, eth ethically good thing, or just overall good for your child. Or like, like, have clear motives, like, ethical motives why you're going to send your child to Yeah. You. Also, you're, <laughs> this is more of a joke, but you're going to get really, your parents and you will probably have to get really good at sneakily calling it homeschooling. <laughs> Because yeah. it's, a, it's a pain to, like, you say, oh, I'm homeschooled. Everyone's like, oh, okay. But you say, oh, I'm unschooled, and everyone's like, oh, well, what's that? Yeah, I, I definitely have tried to avoid it a lot. If I'm not in the mood, I'm like, oh, fuck. It's like, it's like um, I get a lot of prank phone calls. Not like prank, like, it's like scammer phone calls. Oh, yeah. I don't have to mess with them. Yes. It's like, do I really want to mess with this guy right now? Like, I might do it later. Uh, yeah, so it's like, every time I get a scammer call, I absolutely screw with them. No, I get them three times. I get them I get five times a day. Oh. I'm a metal vocalist, so when I get a scammer call, I answer in my Hello! I always, I always the, the last I'll... scammer call that I had, I um uh, I talked to this guy for a really long time about my credit card or something. He's like I was like, okay sir, I'm with uh the IRS and we need to the American government or something like that, like a thick Indian accent. He's just like, so sir, let me ask and you could hear the people talking in the background. You could tell it was a call center. You can hear the people talking in the background. But he's like, so sir, uh, let, I need to get your credit card number so we can uh, then get help you with your credit card debt, which makes no fucking sense, whatever. So I'm like, okay, all right, so I'm gonna start now, okay? And he's like, yes, sir. And I say, okay, all right, one. He says, okay. I said, that's it. And he said, he said, okay, sir, you can shove your credit card up your ass. <laughs> <laughs> But that was a nice little side. Thing. No, but it's like the the thing the thing is like, do I really want to explain it to them right now, or just want to wait for the next person that's gonna ask me the same fucking thing? Yeah. <laughs> and I'll answer I mean, it then. I just, like I, mean, I had this like people... I had this last guy <laughs> talk to me because, um, and because uh, the other guy I was talking to shares a friend with me, and he thought that we go to the same school. It's like no, I go to another school. And he's like, oh, what school do you go to? It's like fuck. Do I really want to get in this? I was like, I know, I, I know. To, I, I, I get that like, all the time. I was like, I just go to a school in Medford. He was like, Oh, okay. But yeah, I, I really hate it. When I, like, it. if someone asks me what grade I'm in, I just go. I say, Oh, I'm in tenth grade. And it's like, please don't freaking ask any other questions. Normally, normally to that, I always say like, I think I would be in tenth grade, and that normally confuses people enough, but it doesn't make them want to ask any more questions. Yeah, well, like if you just <laughs> <So, like, laughs> Just confuse them enough so they never talk to you again. Yeah. yeah. Like, this kid's like, what like, do you mean? It's what like, what is this guy? What the fuck is this kid talking about? Maybe, yeah. maybe in 10th grade, what the fuck? I'm sorry. It's like, yeah. But it's like, like enough to where, like, don't talk to me again, okay? Don't talk. Yeah, it's just, what's, what's really sad is, like, I have conversations regularly with people who just... I would hate, hope so. Who just hate school. Oh, yeah, J Dylan, you're so funny. <laughs> Your sarcastic comments are so witty and so awesome. You should just go be a stand-up idiot. <laughs> Thank um, you. I was thinking about it. <laughs> yeah, I know. Be... Jonah's just an asshole. He just likes like. You so could funny. just go up on stage and like just literally start making fun of every single just, person. Just be. Just like, go on stage. Hey, just be a dick. you you look like a you look like a fucking idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Where like, do you think I get it from Neil? <laughs> uh, well, no, Neil is way more. Neil just likes to like talk down to people. That's his. <laughs> well, what I can't help it when someone says you can see it, I like in sarcasm. Yeah, Neil is just calling people idiots. fucking idiots. <laughs> yeah, it's what so. Are you Martin? It's well, anyways, like I don't even remember remotely what I was saying. Should we you were, move on to the next part of the question. You were talking about how you have conversations. That, that, that was the entire question. We should actually probably okay. move on to the next question now. Yeah. Because we've spent a lot of time on this one. All right. So the next question, let me just... Uh, While he's doing that, the best is when Neil's wrong about something, but he doesn't know how to admit it, so he just, like... He just keeps to... rolling with it. Yeah, he just keeps, like, he keeps arguing I'm... devil's advocate for everything. Me and, me and Neil got into that a couple days ago about Bernie Sanders. No, 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 wait, no, wait, kick, no, you're wrong. You're I, would like to, I would like to say I kicked Neil's ass. You did not. Like, I asked you, I asked you about the whole gun, and you're like, mm, I don't know, I'll look that up, and I'll have to talk to and you. Then, like, and then you got, oh my god, Neil, you were just so retarded about that whole thing. You were so dumb, you, you just made but broad what? claims. Right, don't, get, don't get him started on net neutrality, because we all know how that went last time. Yeah, they, did, Brian, Martin was too much of a coward even talking, like, oh, my dad just showed you on net neutrality, uh, log off. 
<laughs> yeah. Well, that was just a joke. I wasn't actually being serious about that. Also, yeah. you called me a coward, dude. We. I actually before. think that the uh, that the I could solve conversation with things that aren't my words if you wanted to. I think that the weakest argument made was on net neutrality. Everything else is pretty solid. In that my opinion, made? that's what I thought. Or what? Who made? Your dad. I think you're just salty. But anyways, let's move on. You just said okay. All right. Neil's crying. <laughs> like inside, he's like, to up on our net neutrality <laughs> podcast. I just think it's so. I, it's just very wrong. funny. <laughs> well, I just don't like arguing with you because you're just you're very frustrating to argue with. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. I'll get you. I'll get you a bottle of milk. Oh, Neil made fun of me. He called me a poo poo head. I can't argue with him. It has nothing to do with your insulting. It has everything to do with your blatant disregard for your own mortality of thought, dude. You're not the smartest person in the world. What? That is such a straw man. Oh, <laughs> uh, instead of actually arguing, I'm just gonna say I'm just gonna make a random. What are we even arguing about, dude? You're supposed to be reading a question. Now that I'm wrong, I'm now gonna say that you should have been reading the question. <laughs> this, is this what you do every day, dude? I know I'm an idiot. Now I'm gonna no, now I'm gonna say that. Every way? Mm-hmm. This is so fun. Martin, when you knew you were wrong, you said, Neil, shouldn't you be reading the question and not uh, humiliating me on my stream? Also, I can see the veins popping out of your forehead. Anyways, I'll now move on to yeah, you. My, yeah, I mean, oh my God. It's so fun to egg you on, though. because This just question like, is mostly for Martin. <laughs> I'm interested in your process of learning and mastering different musical instruments, including voice. What does your self-teaching process um, look like for uh, each one? Who asked Do you this ever question? work with teachers, and if so, uh, what makes you decide you need one? From Who mom. This question? From mom. <laughs> yeah, it's just like my mom's like getting on, like asking me questions. Uh, this was a uh, good job, Marty. This was a uh, Scott. I don't know how to pronounce that. No, or no, yeah, no, or no, yeah. This uh, he also helped set this whole thing up. Oh, cool. So, um, for me, for instruments and like just things like this. I, I, so what my process was, I started playing drums in church band when I was seven years old. And to answer your question, I've never taken a lesson for anything except for piano with my grandmother for like a year when I was like four. And I started playing guitar when I was 12. And I joined my first band when I was 12. And we sucked. And it's basically just been a process of trial and error. The first album I tried to record was recorded on a free download multi-track recorder app that I bought on that I bought that I got on my phone and it like it was very very rough and the songs were okay but basically my way of learning how to play instruments was just listening to a lot of music and practicing a lot of music so how I learned to play drums was I had a record player next to my electric drum set I bought the records I liked and I played drums to them. So that was my drum teacher was songs for the death by Queens of the stone age. And then how I learned how to play guitar was just, I ended up on guitar in a band without really know how, knowing how to play guitar. So I kind of learned as a necessity in order to continue to make that. And as I continued with that process, I picked up bass and vocals and things like that. <laughs> and then as I started to get a little bit better at it, I started to figure out more of like what my sound would be. And then for like, you, I got friends asking me like, Hey, could you help me out with this? And like, I started to learn how to produce uh, and do other style of production. And I have a very, very wide range of music that I listen to, which has helped me with producing music. Cause I can go into like my home studio that I built and I can make an EDM track but I could also go make like a 13 minute metal song. And it basically just all started with an incredible like love for music and like really admiring what music does to the human condition. Cause it's a really powerful thing that like everyone in the world has music that like they, that's theirs for like, not everyone, but most people that there's music that there's some song out there that connects with them in a way. And I, that fascinated me a lot. So I wanted to be someone who could connect with people. And for the mastering and mixing part, I use GarageBand because it's free. And 
I had uh, once again, it's just trial and error. I look up YouTube tutorials and I also, I don't even look up tutorials. I listen to like a lot of my, for mixing, I listen to a lot of records that I like and I watch interviews with the producers of those records because you can always, no one ever watches them except for music nerds, but you can find interviewers with producers where they talk about what they do and I try and mimic that. So if, like, I, it's still like, I'm still learning. That's probably the thing I'm the newest at is the recording process. But I basically just put most of my effort into making sure I can get it to sound good enough that the actual music does the work. Cause a lot of it's more rock stuff. So I don't, it doesn't need to be a super like solid production, but it, I need it to be good enough that it actually, you can actually understand what's happening. It's not just like <laughs> the whole time. And I've also tried my best to collaborate with a, the widest range of musicians that I could. So like church band to like random 25 year old hippie dude that I met to like my friends. And then I also try to like teach some people how to play music. And I'm in a lot of bands, which helps me learn how to like interact with other musicians because I'm, I'm a kind of like I'm a DIY kind of person. So I tend to want to do things myself. So being in a band helped me learn how to accept criticism and how to like work with other people to reach a goal. So basically it all started with liking music and I know, I know I did not have any teachers and no, and obviously I ask people for help if I'm stuck on something, but for the most part, it's trial and error there. I have, no joke over 300 recorded songs that probably only about 15 of them have been heard by people that aren't me and all of those can just show like the progression because like the first one is me humming into my phone at 12 years old with like an out of tune guitar playing one single chord over and over again and now the newest one is like the thing that i just released with my band that we just put out an album last week and there's definitely, you can see, and something that I noted when I was looking back through the recordings the other day, is you can, it's almost sounds like traveling through time of recording equipment. Like you get, cause I basically just started from the most basic thing I had to build up to like something more modern. And if you listen to the songs in order, you can hear that and you can like hear the progression. And then I think back to like how I learned how to do that. And it's almost always just been musicians I idolize and songs so there you go very nice so do you want to move on because you should probably try to actually answer the questions a little faster now because mm-hmm. we took way too long all right so let's move on uh lucy hazel says Hello, I would like to know uh, what you what you feel are the biggest obstacles that you as a self-directed learner uh, or if you are aware of any peers that find it harder than others. So what are the biggest obstacles that you think as a self-directed learner and are you aware of any peers that find it harder than others? Okay, so yes. trying to get people to understand that I can still learn a decent amount of information with Google that you can with a teacher. Yeah. Um, do you want to say anything? Wait, what? Sorry, what was the question? Wait, that wasn't, wait, Martin, I don't think I, did that answer the question? What are the biggest obstacles you face as a self, oh, trying to get people, okay. That didn't, yeah, the answer doesn't make sense. All right, uh, what are the biggest obstacles you face as a self-directed learner? And are, are you aware of any peers that find it harder than yourself or others? I think we kind of already answered it, didn't we? When, yeah, we we kind of already touched on that. Well, we if we want to go into less about uh, no, we should touch on it because the problem is, is that I'm literally linking these people like the timestamp of the video, and yeah. I can't just be like we answer that. Please watch the entire video too. Well, you can you can just time you okay. can just, well, you can just well, send them the timestamp when we talked about this it. This is yeah, a I'm not argument. Much about long podcast to find exactly when we were talking about that, Dylan. Just tell just tell them them okay, guys, 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 calm down, children. Sorry. This is when no one invites Martin to parties. Like I have to be very reasonable and uh, very well read. Also, yeah, because comes- you guys are going to so many parties. <laughs> Everyone, yeah, we are. You, Neil. You yeah, guys more than fucking like, live in the club life. <laughs> we do. 
Um, More than you. <laughs> you'd be surprised. Anyways. Oh, um, oh, I happen to be very cool, okay? I, I happen to be the coolest <laughs> one on the block. Uh-huh. What, what were you saying, Lauren? Um, I, I was just going to say, like, we could go, because, like, for me, that answer would be always per- people's perception. But if we want to get to more like the actual physical limitations of self-directed learning, which there aren't a lot, but there's still some, which is just like sometimes reading articles on Google aren't the same as hear it. Like for some people, it's easier to hear it set like spoken to them in a classroom than it is to hear like to read it on your own. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I guess for me on certain subjects that I've tried to research, it's been better for me to find like a lecture online explaining it rather than reading it. But that's mm-hmm. not so much of an, I guess it's kind of an obstacle. It's just not one that's hard to get over. Yeah. Sorry, you gotta grab something on the floor. I know what you mean. Like, I haven't had, I haven't had too many things like that because if I'm ever interested in something that much, I just, just go and, and find it, <laughs> like live. But I haven't yeah. had too, like, I don't really know. Yeah, for me, the obstacles are always how people perceive you. I've never really had a lot of real obstacles in what I'm doing. It's always been, like, what people think of you. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that, um, obstacle for me, for me, um, well, more, well, first touching on the whole thing about peers, I think a lot of, some on schoolers, not a lot, some on schoolers, we, t- we just touched on this, uh, have problems with socialization. Not, not all, not even the majority. Um, not even a significant percentage. I don't, I'm, not, I'm not trying to give out statistics here. Uh, I'm just saying that I've seen some unschoolers that have uh, some social difficulties or artists completely uninterested in everything else. That's not necessarily a bad thing, but I think the social aspect is, again, as, as I said earlier, the catalyst uh, for learning in a lot of ways. And I think if that isn't nurtured and or encouraged by either A, your peers, if you're in a Sudbury school, or B, if you're an unschooler, uh, that can, you can come across as very socially awkward and not able to read on certain social cues. Yeah, I think another thing that happens is it gets generalized in, though, because I think a lot of people, I think a lot of ch- parents who find out their children has, like, Asperger's or autism pull their children out of school because the treatment of people with those particular disabilities are it's like really horrible in the school system so i think that can also attribute to how some people would see unschoolers as awkward but also at the same time i think yeah i don't know it's just there's definitely obstacles but none of them are big enough to like that i can think of them like there's Mm -hmm. definitely been times where i've been like well, this is this would be a little less difficult if I wasn't unschooled, but like it's never been something that has been big enough of an issue for me to like. Yeah. Remember right now. No, I know I haven't had really much of a problem. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean. What are you saying, Neil? Um, I guess for me personally, well, I, I want to touch on something else. Um. This, a study done by Peter, Dr. Peter Green and Dr. Gina Riley on uh, unschooling, uh, unschooling adults uh, referenced something, uh, referenced, and these are like adults who are, the vast majority of them are financially independent. Unschooled adults or unschooling adults? Unschooled adults, adults as in they okay. were unschooled and now they are adults and most of them are financially independent. Um, uh, they, they all, these are, again, adults, fully grown adults, they all, mo- the majority of them listed the number one problem uh, with, their, uh, with their lifestyle was having to talk to people that just didn't understand it, like outright, just didn't understand it. These are not kids saying like, oh, it was just the guy, this guy that annoyed me that one time. These are, these are adults, um, and they, they are, they, most of them have jobs and are completely financially independent, and they listed that. That, that should really tell you something. Yeah, about- like, people under, like, people underestimate the actual, like, emotional and just, like, like the emotional long-term damage of constant questioning of your entire of, life yeah exactly like it there's definitely times where you can brush off your soul, shoulders but there's definitely times i think it probably hurts the most with people that you know where you feel like they really don't approve of like what your life is that's definitely that people tend to forget that that's actually like I don't think that necessarily anyone means anything by it, but people tend to forget that that's emotionally damaging long term. Mm-hmm. 
to be like a 12 year old kid and have like your parents friend or like your friend or just someone in your life who's important to you question your entire like existence essentially like because that's what you're doing that's like a part of you unschooling Mm -hmm. like learning on your own is definitely something that's important if you talk to the average adult who goes public school they'll say that schooling was a very big part of their lives that's what that's the majority of your life basically when you yeah that like questions the majority no it it, it takes it definitely takes a little bit to like get used to uh to get used to it because it gets yeah it it hurts after a while it, like even even after you get used to it, there's definitely some days you wake up and someone says something very minor, and it's like all of those things that didn't bother you as much then, like they all come back. Like it's just the very- majority of these people putting the scrutiny on you. If if you and the average, I would say the average like Sudburyan or unschooler can articulate themselves rather well. Um, if you try to put that scrutiny on their life, uh, there would be a, probably a hostile response. Um, yeah. However, unschoolers and subway schoolers are, again, have this high standard of you need to articulate yourself very well. Yeah. Like, and that's not fair. But, like, the other thing that's difficult about being unschooled, like, it, the, besides the emotional endurance that you need to develop to be able to handle constant questioning of everything you do, is, like, learning how to realize that people think less of you that not everyone, but there are people that you'll encounter who will think less of you and that you need to make sure that doesn't let you like make you feel less of you. Mm-hmm. Cause like there are currently in America, we have not great mental health. People are not doing so hot and you like people That's really awesome. never know what's going on in another person's head. Like when you, like when you say something as like what could be perceived as casual as like as casually just like yanking your chain or whatever and like just being like hey yeah, you need to just go to school and then you know things like if you say that in a way where like people like you actually mean it a little bit but you're kind of joking about it because you don't want to flat out say it mm-hmm. to like someone who's down on their luck and isn't feeling so great that could be devastating and I'm not one of those people that's like, we need to make sure that everything's a safe space for people. Yeah, yeah. That's I don't think not how I feel wrong. at all. Just but be considerate. It's not hard to be kind. Yeah. Being if kind you're is... asking questions, scary. make sure it comes from a place of... Uh, if you're asking questions, make sure it comes curiosity. from... Curiosity. Of curiosity. Yeah. And, and uh, not just curiosity, but even if it's not and you genuinely think what, the, what this person is doing is harmful, be respectful and, un, and uh, have some empathy and put yourself in their shoes, and what if I was getting this certain scrutiny on my life decisions? Yeah. And the the number one thing that we keep coming back to is, you're you, no matter what other people tell you you are. So if other people tell you you're the, like, the tall, spiky leather jacket unschooler kid who needs to go back to Nashua, like, that doesn't mean that that's you. Because mm-hmm. you're still you. Except if you're Martin, that means then, then then that is you. Well, I mean, <laughs> technically, yeah, if it is you, like, but if people try and label you as being one thing, and that mm-hmm. one thing is a negative light of, like, a negative inflection of a first impression of you, when they don't, like, when that becomes their label for you and don't get to know you, you can't let that bother you. I've experienced that with someone who was pretty close to me recently where I basically found out that they just thought of me as, like, this thug. Which, like, no, I'm not kidding. I like when, <laughs> I when I talk about When I talk about people thinking I'm, like, scary, I, like, people actually, I found out recently that someone who I was very close with actually found me, like, very intimidating. Mm-hmm. Because That's of weird. my choice and, cl- like, you talk to me for two seconds, I'm, the, like, I'm the nerdiest kid you know. But because I'm, like, tall and I wear spiky leather, people just assume I'm going to, like, murder them, apparently. Mm. I don't think I've ever gotten that where someone thinks I'm going to murder them. Not yet, at least. <laughs> well, I mean, you, you haven't asked me. Definitely Neil. Neil. Well, I'm Neil. Neil, Neil I, 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 I want to be surprised as a closeted murderer because 
I, I was <laughs> closeted. <laughs> I, don't think, I don't think anyone would think. No, no, no. Because look, because I, I remember specifically, I came home, I came to school, and Dylan was like, "Oh my god, no, you look like the preppiest little fuck." Because I had like a dope shirt, and like, so I, I wear very um nerdy clothes, like exact opposite of what. Oh you yeah, wear. I'm aware. Yeah. <laughs> oh, thanks. And um, and I feel like I feel like I could. I feel like. Uh, so yeah, I come across that, and I feel like there's something dark lurking underneath. Uh, the way I see it is, like, there's three stereotypes for unschooler. There's, like... Socially inept. There's, like, the socially inept kid with the super long hair who's wearing a fedora shirtless playing Minecraft in his basement. <laughs> it's funny, because that's probably the most... That's, like, one. so many people, though. Like, not so many, but enough that, that, like, all the people who are like that, like, you have an image in your head of a friend of yours that's like that. I guarantee you, uh-huh. both of you do. And I do, too. His name's and- <laughs> <laughs> and then there's like um then there's like the super like well actually who just like the know-it-alls and that one <laughs> and then there's the one that like is just a little like nerdy doesn't have the best social cues also neil, <laughs> also neil. Are, are you just together. describing me like i don't understand what you're talking about so like nerdy socially inept know-it-all that's just neil <laughs> anyways is, is there another question um so t- Yeah, <clears throat> so let me just look quick up there. Uh, what is this? Yeah. All right. All right, so the next question is from Jim Flannery. Wow, oh, wow, that I guy, know. he seems pretty cool. What a fucking loser. Like, look at it. He looks like... <laughs> you're talking about me being the preppiest little fuck? Oh, my God. You, can, you should see his profile pic. This guy looks like a real asshole. Seriously, anyways. Full disclosure, we know this guy. <laughs> This is this is a friend of ours. We're not just roasting people who are asking us questions. Oh, well, this guy looks like a real fucking loser, right? <laughs> um, do you think young people can uh, uh, be trusted to make decisions about their own education when they lack the career and life experience of adults? How can this trust be built? So, uh, do you think I, I okay? So, uh, the first part of the question: Do you think young people can be trusted to make decisions about their own education when they lack the career and life experience as adults? Um, so education, no, yes. I don't think this really correlates to career life experience. I think this is something that I think, and, and while I do think that being, um, just saying I have more experience than you because I'm adult is not a valid argument. I think it's also something to acknowledge that some people may have more experience on something than you do because of their age. That being said, that shouldn't be a determining factor. You actually have to prove that independently of the fact that you are that age. Uh, so basically, uh, while that may ring true, if you have more experience on a certain topic because of your age, uh, you have to independently prove that and not just say, I am this age, therefore I have more experience on this. Um, but should uh, you be able to make the choice on education? So well, I don't really think that, so first of all, I really don't think that career correlates to that that much um, for, for, but, um, for life experience. Um, I think it's a learning process. I think you could say the same thing about 18-year-olds or 19-year-olds getting a job or having well, in college. And I think that, and I really think, um, and I think that, uh, yeah, so I guess that's what I think. Wait, so can you restate the question one more time? Yeah. Uh, do you think young people can be trusted to make decisions about their own education? Okay. Yeah. When they lack so, the career life experience adults? Yeah. Um, for me, I have a lot to say on this. Oh. I'm not going to say all of it because there is a lot, but... Basically, it is way more complicated than just a simple black and white answer. Mm. I think if someone, mm, it is. Trust <laughs> me, we're not. You're not going to get in with me on this because it will not work out well for you. Um, Excuse me. Uh, Excuse me. Well, I have like like multiple people who have, I have like examples of. Anyways, so I'm going to use a few examples for this. I think it is like most things it comes down to trust so if you have a kid who's in school who's like hating it and they beg their parents to take them out of their out of school to like try something else and like they get taken out of school and the kid just wants to sit all like and just do nothing for a little bit i think you have to trust them to do that (laughs) you have to like that here's the thing though so parents need to know how to trust kids to do that because they will get the incentive to want to learn again. But kids need to know that their parents are 
taking a huge thing here and doing a lot for you by giving you that trust. So don't betray it. I want to interrupt you really quick. I just need this really quick. We should try to uh, make each question kind of quick because three more people actually posted. Okay, so. I'm going to go quickly. Yeah. So basically, I think it's a parent-child relationship thing, and you need to build a trusting system where both the child trusts the parent and the parent trusts the child. And if you don't have that loop of trust, then it's not going to work out the way it should. And you'll have, there'll be problems because a kid who's in public school isn't going to want to be pulled out of public school to do more learning at home right away. There needs to be a period of like doing nothing, doing nothing, but not a long, like enough that they can know what they want to learn and just kind of calm down from it. And I think parents need to trust that their kids aren't just going to become a vegetable who lives on the streets if they don't want to be in school. Cause that's blatantly wrong. It like, if you pull your child out of school and he goes home because he wants to unschool and he doesn't immediately start becoming an entrepreneur, that doesn't mean he's going to like, and you have and to I, trust that your kid isn't going to just, and I no would one say wants too, to sit at home think, all day doing nothing for the rest of their life. I think there's like a period too, just for the parent, like a transitioning period. Yeah, it's definitely. Like, it's not just like a normal, normal unschool, like normal life. And yeah, and kids. Like need it took to a long understand. time for my mom, like to like really get it. I exactly. I don't know. If still, a hunt like a million percent gets it. That's that's the other part. A million it's, percent, Dylan. You really should go to public school. <laughs> it's, it's, well, I know, well, you know the what most it, you can get is it, two million percent, right? Kids, <laughs> well, you know what kids, I mean. It's like like kids, not, She's very, very, very close. Kids need to understand that it is definitely a big transition for parents too. And that needs to be a, like mutually respected. Also, yes. really, really quick, for the album I just dropped, you can go to the analytics on Spotify, and it said the analytics for the song, how many people are listening to the song, has gone up by 665%. And this is on the official Spotify website. So that may, I was like, what? That's, that's really high. I'm confused. Anyways. From one person to seven people. <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> like, I went up by 665%, and I was like, what does that mean? That's mm -hmm. like such a strange, that's a specific, strangely specific number. Anyways, let's, we can go on to the next question. Uh, Dylan, do you want to touch on that real quick? No, not really. All right. I think, it, I think you guys touched on pretty much everything I had to say. Yeah, I was going to, all right, I'll, <laughs> all right, never mind. All right. Um, ooh, this question is from, uh, one second. Dylan, check your messages in the chat. This question is from Rick J. Uh, what do you think is the best way to promote this form of learning uh, to our current society? Uh, how can we make it uh, widespread? Slowly. Yeah. Um, it's yeah. not a good idea to just like present to teachers like everything you're doing is going to be inevitably bad for the child you're teaching. <laughs> Jesus Christ, Martin. Like, you got to be slow. With I won't the... go that far. Well, I, that's what I'm saying, though. You're doing. There that's what I'm saying, things. though. Like, you can't, you got to make sure you're, it's a light, like, it has to be very, it has to be something that you don't just. It's really funny because some of our most avid supporters of Sudbury schools are teachers. Well, yeah, I'm just, I'm just, I was just giving, like. No, I know, I know. I'm just saying that it's I really funny. Like, I'm and... some of the most avid supporters of my lifestyle that I've met have been teachers because they know yeah, it's, how it's, uh, pretty, yeah, it's pretty because they understand the flaws in the system and they want to yeah. change. Especially the older, or the older teachers, not so much the younger students. Anyway, anyways, I would say slowly because we're definitely in an era in like history where I think in 20 years, this is going to be remembered as like that time when everyone was losing their minds about everything and everything like perception of things mm -hmm. that seemed normal are no longer that way. Like, yeah. And like Martin, I agree with you. Like when me and Neil, we went to the era conference this summer and it was actually, it was pretty funny. There was a guy who was um, a local superintendent who just started to implement a program of like less homework and more recess. And he's like, yeah. you like, he's like talking like he figured this thing out. Like, yeah, this is, I just, like, and what, it's like, like, it's Dylan, like and I, Dylan, Jim and I are both, are all sitting there going, what the fuck, this is so. We this, all know this. Everyone in this room this, knows we're, this. Dylan, Jim and I were just sitting there going, this is so backwards. Like, we were yeah. just sitting there, 
But for me, that's like, knows this. that doesn't bother me that much because it's like, well, at least they're figuring it out. And even if they... No, thought, I'm not saying it bothers me. I'm just saying that compared to yeah. the attitude of the Aero Conference, yeah. it, was, it, was, it was really great to see the atmosphere of the room as this guy is either really, really moderate or really, really concerned. Just because it's, I think it's a very funny dynamic and yeah. a very, a very interesting dynamic to see the culture. It's, it's really funny too, like Finland, which is like literally the most liberal place like in the whole fucking world. <laughs> they like they clearly just... you've never been to california anyways can you... <laughs> i but um god it's like it's so funny to see it because they just had this like they have like one of some of the best schools in the world and like they were someone that went it's like how'd you do it was like all we did we just stopped giving the kids homework <laughs> and they're like that's it and he was like yeah and they're like the interviewers from like cbs or something it was like um Wow, well, we're not fucking doing that, I guess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just like, I think we're at a point in society where people are way more open to the idea of like, oh, yep, our schools are, are fucked. Like, w- there's problems here. We got to, like, analyze them a little bit more than we are. Um, yeah, like, uh, um, just, it's just very... It's very, like, you can look around just in society in general. Things are different now than they were 10 years ago. I talk about that a lot because it's very fascinating to me. But, like, I think people are starting to realize more than ever, like, oh, we messed up. Children, like, want to die all the time. That's not good. We're making them want to self-destruct. What are we doing wrong? Um, It's, like, and it's kind of, like, the way I like to see it in my brain is, like, the school system is like the computer program and an AI and the parents are the programmers and like this, like a society is the programmers and like the program itself is the children, but the AI keeps shutting itself down every time it starts to like, like every time it's at like 80%, it shuts down. And like the way I see that in real life is like, we're forcing like so much information into children before they're ready and not giving them enough time to process it or do other things other than school all the time that they're like, Oh, well I'm out. And that's why we have so much like suicide and depression. And people are realizing that, Oh wait, yeah. Schools are probably a part of this. And so is bullying. So we already have like all of the anti-bullying thing. And we're also starting to get on the whole schools are not the greatest for children thing. And it's a slow process. But I think one of the things that really started to make me notice that the mainstream was caring was that Boy in a Band video, the rap one that got like went super, super viral. The Don't Stay in School. Yeah. Well, funny thing is the follow up video to that that less people saw was multiple schools actually saw that video and changed their syllabus. Yeah, that was really cool. Yeah. So I've definitely seen like with the evolution of the Internet and how that affects our culture, that affects how we view things like this because now there's more information to new ideas so people are saying oh yeah maybe homework for most of children's like maybe constant work for most of a child's waking hours is maybe not a great idea Mm -hmm. yeah i thought his video was really interesting i um i uh well he's an avid supporter of suburb schools by the way in case you haven't seen his video um you no, I did. Really have to go to school. No, I did. I saw the video. I really liked it. But um, so <clears throat> yeah, I really I like. Kind of a little bit like you, Martin. Boy in a band. <laughs> yeah. We gotta we gotta hurry this along a little bit because. Okay, uh, so do yeah. we want to go to the next question, or you guys have things to say on this one? Yeah, let me just say one thing, and then let's move on. I just still want to say something. Nope. Okay, so then, yeah, I agree with Martin, basically. Um, it's going to take time, and the best thing you can do is, uh, is if you're an unschooler or a subject learner or anything like that, uh, articulate yourself well, be polite, and be a good example. Imagine this, you're going to be the, imagine you're going to be the person's perception on everything about this. Not to put pressure on you, but just try to imagine that, and I think that will help just open people up to the idea of it. Uh, all right, so. That's why I don't let Neil go anywhere. <laughs> All right, so, uh, all right, so the next question is from Amy, Amy C. Schroeds. It's, uh, she says, 
thanks so much for doing this. Uh, what are specific instances you've experienced uh, when you thought it would be uh, you would uh, it would have been easier if you were not unschooled, if any? Well, first what? of all, you're welcome, Amy, and thanks for asking the question. <laughs> uh, what made um, what made them feel this way? Edit. Uh, heard you uh, address. Uh, heard you address the, this further in the live stream. Leaving the question here in case you'd like to add any other thoughts on this afterwards. So apparently, I don't remember when we addressed this. Oh yeah, we did address this. There was another kind of question about this. We address this. Um, uh, she, she's leaving the question here basically because we, I guess, uh, uh, already like touched on it a little bit. And Ask the question I, one more time. If you want to add anything on it, basically. Ask so, the question one more time. Uh, yeah. Um, so, thanks so much for doing this. What are some specific instances you've experienced when you thought it would be easier if you were not unschooled, uh, if any? Oh, okay. What made you feel that way? Edit. Heard you the, the edit thing. Yeah, okay. Um, um, well, if I can, now that I've had a little bit more time to think about it, there's definitely been times socially where um, people have, oh, I was having a conversation with someone about, like, being drug free and like being against that and they're like oh well that doesn't count because you're unschooled and i was like what you i well he well he said homeschool i was like i'm unschooled first of all and second of all i guarantee you uh, the unschooled community is way more open to drugs than like the wherever you come from because yeah, like you can fucking come yeah well yeah i mean you guys don't see me in person often but i'm I'm not one to back down from people arguing with me in person if they start a fight. I've gotten in trouble with people about that before because I usually win, whether they like it or not, or whether I'm right or not, because I'm just an asshole to argue with, even if I'm wrong. Anyways, yeah, that would be my specific instance. I don't know. I haven't had anything really like that <clears throat> because I have a, I'm lucky I had a mix of both where I could like... I could draw upon a public school. Um, <clears throat> I think probably like Martin said, maybe the social aspect, but not in the same way he described it. Probably just because when you bring up Sudbury um, or anything, like it's it's a lot easier to be like, oh, what school do you go to? This school, oh, who do you have in the teachers in class? It's just weird to stand there um, when people are talking about that. And it's much, and it's much, it's a lot harder when you're sitting there and you wait for someone and you're like sitting there in dread waiting for someone to ask you and you have to lecture this person, basically. It's so awkward. It's so awkward. Oh, yeah, because you have a, a real hard time lecturing people. I know. Well, it's, it's when I have someone that I can't, it's not someone that I can't tolerate. It's just that someone, someone, first of all, that person really doesn't care, first of all. Second of all, the only reason they're even addressing it is because of the abnormal thing that I'm doing. There's no actual yeah. curiosity there. Um, they're probably yeah. not even bring up valid criticisms. It's just a socially awkward thing for yeah. everyone. Yeah, yeah, it's just awkward. That's probably the only thing any of us would want to change. It's I just want to say that the fact that that's probably the biggest problem that I have is kind of oh, that says a lot. This is that a, lot. a lot. That's the biggest yeah. problem I have. That the biggest problem that you have is awkward situations with peers and adults from time to time. Yeah. That definitely says a lot on just how free it is. And just like I know, not, yeah. Not free money-wise, free, like, like America-wise. <laughs> America. And, and Dylan, you have anything to add? Is there a next question? So, all right, the final question is actually, it just, it actually says, uh, this is not a really, it's just, so, hi, Dylan, Martin, and Neil. I don't have a question. Just praise and thanks for taking the time to do this AMA and for your wonderfully articulate and intelligent live podcast. I am in awe. Well, you really shouldn't have said that because you're feeding into our ego way more than you realize. Especially Neil's. <laughs> Especially mine. Um, you know, someday, someday, I said this in the chat to you, Dylan, but I'm not sure if you saw it. Someday, Neil is just going to be like actually like really wrong about something and like he's just going to snap and then he'll become, he'll become a serial killer. <laughs> like you'll see, like he'll see his brain like go, oh no, I'm wrong. And then he'll just be like, and he'll just, he'll want to murder everyone. I have admitted that I have changed my opinion on things because of him. Well, yeah, I, I know. I'm just saying like, if like, you've been, 
one day. Very wrong about something. So uh, actually, uh, I want to say this because the whole libertarian debate that Martin and I were arguing about, and with uh, the, uh, no, 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 I don't want to no, no, get no. into this. One right thing, no, 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 no. This isn't going to be a point of contention. Okay. I cha- I legitimately changed my opinion on one thing because of the conversation with your dad, and that was minimum wage. I didn't really change my opinion as much on anything else. I kind of no. Just you didn't. You thought the minimum wage was good. Okay. No, I just didn't understand it as much, and now I completely understand it. And I ha- and I had some arguments, I guess, against it, but now I have no arguments for a minimum wage, literally none. Yeah. So that I totally changed my opinion on that. The minimum minimum wage is really stupid, and people are even stupider for trying to raise it because they're really dumb. Yeah. Well, everyone's um, dumb. Yeah. Um, uh, so yeah. Uh, thank you. Thank you for like participating. Yeah. Thank you. I mean, having mm-hmm. us to do it, like everyone at the Alliance for Self directed learning um i've been like an avid supporter of the community around this since i was able to understand what that meant and it's just been like the last few weeks the various things that we've done like doing this ama and um interviewing dr peter gray it's just like really been like dreams come true because it's like it's just been what i base my points and arguments off of and getting to be able to be recognized in that community that I've learned so much from is just very, it's very surreal. So thank you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We don't deserve it. We don't really do anything. We just sit no, here we, and rant. So we just sit fun. here and rant and then have stupid arguments where we call each other stupid. Yeah, that's mainly because you guys are stupid and I'm and I'm not. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like yeah. everyone should just learn by now that Neil is always right, except for when he's wrong, which is most of the time. Anyways. <laughs> <clears throat> so yeah thank you for participating i hope i hope we'll be able to do something like this again at some point in the future and we are almost we're a few months away from being two years of being a show now which is pretty insane the formats changed a lot over the two-year time period and i've just really thoroughly enjoyed being a part of it and I would hope that we can continue for another three more years and just keep going and going and going until we're not youth anymore. And then it'll just be subjects of the world by three random guys no one cares about. <laughs> That's kind of what it already is. Well, no, because we have, we have, we have um, youth on our side. Yeah. But after we're not youth anymore, it's kind of like, ah, oh, what the fuck are you going to say? It's not yeah, no, what, well, so here's the thing. What our job is, to do with our different lives that we have lived and neil if you're so confident in your abilities we'll just have to change the perception of the world before we're adults so that by the time we have a podcast when we're adults it will be like we're actually meaningful in some way other than just people marching on to the (laughs) unknown i think yeah um yeah i mean I guess that's kind of it. Is there not to say anything about that? I mean, it's kind of... That was the last question. Oh, we got a comment from the chat, if you guys look in the chat. Oh, okay. Uh, I don't know. Uh, like, we're talking about self... What is SDE? What is that? Self, self-directed, SD, self-directed education. Uh, like, we're talking about self-directed education, the most groundbreaking theory, uh, and then you say things like, no minimum wage, go capitalism. <laughs> All right, let's have some fun, boys. <laughs> okay. So, Neil, you want to start? Time. <laughs> okay. Yeah, All right. Yeah. <laughs> so, who wants to start, Martin? No, you can start. It's more fun watching you do it because you get you're very like to the point. Okay. So, first of all, um, the whole thing about the minimum wage is that it assume it, it it basically unemploys a bunch of people that could be employed for even lower skilled work, even if they're getting paid less. It's totally stupid. Um, if if someone, if it's really, really dumb, if anyone, if anyone, it basically, uh, and yeah, and you, but because the thing is, even if we have a minimum, if we raise minimum wage or anything like that, it's going to have, it's going to basically put more small businesses out of business and it's going to have people um, with having basically no jobs, more people unemployed. Uh, if, would I would rather have someone being paid uh, pennies for a job than being paid nothing and living on the street uh, dying. Like, I would, and the thing is... Wait, Neil, Neil, like, I'll give an example. Like, so for our school, if we wanted to hire a staff member, 
we have a job we're willing to pay ten dollars because that's all we have all we have is ten dollars an hour to be able to pay the minimum wage is fifteen dollars an hour someone that is willing to work for ten dollars an hour legally now, cannot do it can legally, legally cannot do it. do it so we are essentially stopping like now we're gonna put that ten dollars to not we're not gonna give that ten dollars to someone else and also there's stupid examples like in seattle they raise the minimum wage to fifteen dollars an hour which is retarded and nothing it causes happens. Inflation. It causes inflation. And well, well nothing, inflation. nothing happens. But it's impossible to like, like the liberal argument is that nothing happens in Seattle and they raise the minimum wage. But you're not factoring that. This is this is a study that has no um, control. Like you can't have two Seattles where one they raise the minimum wage and one they didn't raise the minimum wage kind of thing. Like at the same time, there's a tech boom in Seattle. But economics does only case examples. Um, there's no study because there's no control. And honestly, it restricts people from having money. It doesn't. It doesn't let people have money. If someone's will, like I'm willing to work. And also, it's stupid. If you're making someone who works as a, um, if you're having a fry cook, a fry cook should not be making a living wage. Like you're a fry cook, you don't need yeah. any skills for that. All you do is sit in front of a grill and you flip hamburgers all day. You don't yeah. need any skills for that. And the great thing is, like when I'm working at my rest, like the place I've been working at, I get paid nine dollars an hour, which is barely a living wage if i was actually trying to live off that which i'm not it's just kind of like yeah. pocket money and also i get experience from working there like just getting on like getting there on time seeing what the social norms are for jobs exactly like it's like you know, i'm also getting paid for that but and also it's stupid when you're trying to start a family when you're working at mcdonald's that's yeah retarded that's Plus, beyond retarded well um, Calm down a little no, bit. It is. You're, if you're I, trying, I know, if you have, if you're trying to start a, a I don't disagree with you. I'm just saying, we're like, we're keep in mind this is our audience, so let's maybe not like I know, I know. insult them but away. This gets me. It gets but you going. It gets I know. Me going. I know. I get. I get it. There are definitely topics that all of us have. For Neil, it's like all of them. But um, <laughs> it like, yeah. And I just, I, there's a lot of people who think like everyone should make the same amount and, and then there's the whole sweatshop argument like oh well it's going to promote sweatshops well at least at least they have the choice of either a working in a sweatshop or b uh living homeless at least they have the freaking choice like is it wouldn't you rather them have the choice like yeah sweatshop yeah. getting paid uh like barely living wage or not even living wage is horrible Basically. however it's better than not getting paid anything right which is literally what yeah. you have basically basically just go watch our interview with kevin olson if you want to get like a really full in-depth both sides kind of like yeah. discussion about it because that's what we had i basically am on the opposite side and i literally changed my opinion on this overnight because it just made logical sense yeah. minimum wage is so stupid i never really liked the minimum wage but i had some arguments against it yeah um I, i've always been opposed to raising minimum wage because it just causes inflation if everybody yeah. has 10 apples and you give everybody one extra apple, the apples are one apple le uh, worth one apple less because yeah. everyone then has that one apple. I, I yeah. do have something to say. Like there's a story in the Bible about like I don't know, like the some angel gave everyone in the in the city. Well, just use the city as, a, as an example for like the world. I don't know. Everyone gets an extra hundred pieces of gold. So now you have the merchants who realize everyone has a hundred extra gold. Now I can raise the prices because everyone's richer. Which is a logical of inflation. Which is which yeah. is a logical thing to do. It's not stupid yeah. to do that. And then yeah, and it's not evil to do and then, that. It's and like then the smart the people that go out and spend their money then are the, like they get something, but then the people that are smart and decide to save that money that they just got are screwed over because now that hundred dollars is essentially worthless. And the people that did spend it when it yeah had some amount of worth, who which were the stupid people, now they actually get something for their hundred dollars. Yeah. Things and like this is why you can't stupid. go out and buy a soda for a quarter anymore. Yeah, it it shows why the smart people, like the dumb people, get rewarded. Like stupid well, people get rewarded. Okay, in this. but once again, mm -hmm. I'm just gonna say. Like I'd prefer if we don't insult. No, no, this isn't. This those. isn't. That wasn't insulting the audience. I mean, That's I know, not me. I know. I'm just saying. I like. I'm. I always end up on the show being the moderator of like using things like it's an idiotic and the idiots get paid. Like just Martin's just trying to be. Martin's just doing that. Martin is the embodiment of the middle ground fallacy. Oh, it's, no. not a <laughs> not really. it's not a fallacy to say don't be mean to Burn is the embodiment of taking things way too seriously as well, clearly. Yeah, oh well, yeah, definitely. I know that. I, well, I just like taking things seriously because then it, like, gets you really riled up, and then I can laugh at it. 
Yeah. If I like take things seriously, and Martin is bragging about being an uh, emotionally manipulating monster. So I just want to point that out. <laughs> but, Dylan does that too, though. We both mo- emotionally. Yeah. Yeah, I but, um, so I just want to, okay, yeah, so wait. we have two minutes though. So we yeah, so we should just, all right, so he also said, um, go capitalism is also something that we either shouldn't have said or he disagreed yeah, with. Yeah, I don't, I mean, I mean, that's okay if you disagree. We don't really have time to talk to that because capitalism is such a broad topic, but. Yeah, but what, I personally what don't show can we reference this person? Yeah. Uh, all, like, a lot of all them. All of them. Most, all, like, of them all, yeah. all of the ones from season two have talked about, like, why we believe. Talk to the one who, yeah, what, what's your dad's name again, Martin? That that one also. Um, covers Kevin it. Olsen, yeah, that one also. Kevin it. Olsen, we go to the on Kevin Olsen. Olsen. That one covers it. Oh, so we got a, the same comment. Uh, you have to stop thinking money and work centrically. Read Peter Gray's how how to um, about less work. Great read. Uh, I mean, well, I mean that's kind of how life works, though. You get money, well, you uh, work, maybe I'm maybe I'm not job. thinking about it, but if well, you're if we're talking about, about the minimum wage, then we're obviously talking about money. So why do we need to exit the context of money? Yeah, like bringing up the minimum wage at all is bringing up money, and money is like. Money is definitely not the most important thing in the world, but de- it's definitely important. And you, like, re- sometimes you like re- you have to accept realities of situations, and you need money to live. And, and none of us are saying money. that you shouldn't that you shouldn't care. Yeah, you should care about only money or anything. We were yeah, just but talking. You do you need to be, to but it, like to be realistic and not to be happy, but to be realistic about life. It's definitely good to have an idea of where you're going to get your money from and to get money you should work for your money. Again, the whole no minimum wage just thing just is the whole no minimum wage thing has nothing to do with talking about being money centric. It just literally gives people a, a choice. It literally gives yeah. people a choice. I think I think it's just logical sense. Cent- even if we were being money centric, I don't necessarily see the problem with that. Anyways, it's six o'clock now. So we, yeah, we gotta go. All right. So but thank you for your, thank you for participating. Thank you everybody. Uh, yeah. thank you very much. And uh, we'll hope we can do it again time. soon. Goodbye. Goodbye, Bye. everyone. Thank you. Humanity has been on an epic journey of discovery, learning the truth about the world we live in. New discoveries about the true origins of humanity, ancient history, free energy, as well as the systematic corruption of world governments are now on the forefront of our daily reality. Is the world headed towards destruction based on control and power? Or is an opportunity now being presented to shift and uplift into a higher consciousness? My name is Mel V co-founder and creative director of Conscious Consumer Network, an independent broadcast network that was launched on the 1st of January 2015. In the last three years, Conscious Consumer Network has broadcast over 2,800 shows in multiple languages, featuring guests from across the world, whilst creating media that is aimed at the creation of a free, fair, peaceful, just, sustainable world. Conscious Consumer Network provides full training and an interactive support network for all broadcasters, and we are always looking for inspiring and educational content. Hi, this is Lainey Liberty. And this is Mira Siegel. In 2018, Conscious Consumer Network has expanded to multiple broadcast locations, increasing our availability and reach across the world, remaining on the cutting edge of independent media. If we wish to create a better world, we must first create better media, geared towards real education instead of indoctrination. You guys really are what changing the world is going to be about. It's educating kids at a grassroots level. Having become a pillar of stability in the turbulent world of independent media, we have even more going on in 2018. Conscious Consumer Network is a publicly funded network and we rely on all of you to keep us on the air. Show your support for independent media by donating to our 2018 Network Support Fund. Dare to seek a better world. Support independent media.